I'm a chemical engineer with an industrial engineering MS. I grew up with a strong Turkish traditional training. My mom is a very Ottoman lady. Aslı knows her. So pretty traditional at home. And then followed by an, by an Austrian education. 11 years I was in an Austrian school. I went over to American college for girls at that time. It was a girls school, the so-called Robert College of today. A very competitive American education where I could improve my concentration on individuality and self-confidence. I believe proper education helps to form people who can make a difference. It's very important. And this all comes from a little town. My father was the first graduate of university of that town. And my mom is only a primary school graduate. She decided I should turn out to be an international woman, a woman who can go anywhere in the world and be confident. What a great wisdom, can you imagine? She's still more clever than me. <laughs> She's 90 by now. But whenever I speak, who was your role model, I keep on saying, that's my mom. I have never been as good as her. She raised children better than me, for sure. <laughs> Okay, as a young engineer, I was exposed to an exciting project. You start as a, as a young engineer, and then all of a sudden, you know, the first project that you are exposed to, and that's mere luck. If you're exposed, for, uh, exposed to important projects, that really is mere luck. After that, you have to be careful enough, clever enough, to take good advantage of them. Uh, that specific project was following. I'm talking back in 1980s. Turkey has chromor, very simple. You need added value products. What comes out of earth is not good enough of a value, so you would like to make chemicals out of it. The whole world, only three com companies in the whole world are making chrome chemicals. So we decided we should produce chrome chemicals. The company I was working at gave, it was this uh, business development group. I had a good boss. So we entered, how do we get chrome chemicals production? There was good financing behind it. There was intention behind it. The board was su supporting us. The board, I'm talking about Chukurova Holding at the time. And we looked into the world, visited, there were German, Italian, American, and Russian producers. So only four companies in the world, very uh, confidentially kept technology. None of the Westerners would give it to us. So we had to handle the, with the Russian technology, which was not as good as the others. Environmentally, not so good as the others. But we sat down with my boss and said, since we're not going to get anything else, so let's, let's go ahead and get this technology into Turkey. At least this is a start. OK, we got this Russian technology. How did I do it? Spending. 15 days, three weeks, somewhere in Sverdlovsk, somewhere in Russia, with the Russian institutions. Most of Russian engineers are somewhere inside the country. I'm talking right after the change of Comecon and the Russian uh, uh, politics, let me say. Fantastic time. They came over. So eventually, I was the process engineer and design engineer at the time. And then I had to become the technical manager of that investment, which meant I had to go to the factory, to the production, not the production, but the investment site in Mersin every week almost. Eventually, we got that factory up, production started. You can't imagine the first feelings you get out of a simple first truck that leaves the factory. You've been working three years on that specific project. Off it goes. Yet. We found out that, the, of course, the Turkish demand is by far much less than the capacity we had built in, and we needed to export. That was going to be a major export item to, from the beginning of the project. Uh, the, my manager in charge, my, uh, my general manager of the company, came and said, are you going to be staying here in Mersin to, pro to become the production manager? as an engineer, or what would you like to do? I said, look, I'm married. My husband sits over there looking at me. I'm married. I ought to go back to Istanbul. I can't stay here for, you know, I can't keep on coming back and forth all my life like this. 
Uh, I'm going back to Istanbul, and if I ways go apart, I'll, I'll, I'll do something else. And he said, no, no, I have an offer for you. Become the sales and marketing manager of this company. Can you imagine? Industrial engineering MS, chemical engineer. And I said, my God. One night thinking, a little bit consultation with my husband, who wasn't very sure, <laughs> because I'm too much of an engineer. Could I do it? And I assured him I could do it. So next morning, I accepted. That was one of the best decisions I've ever made. Because I went ab uh, uh, beyond the boundaries of being an engineer. I decided I would sell the product throughout the world. Uh, of course, that being a technical product was very helpful. You're not selling consumer product. That's a chemical product. You know exactly who is using it, what are the parameters. I built that factory. I know exactly what the product is about. The product is called, by the way, sodium bichromate. So I started as a sales and marketing manager. And I had to sell all the way from US all the way down to Australia. You know, none of the countries was buying at least 20% of my product. I, I had to go on very on every market to try to be able to sell, you know, a good portion of it. I got the first recognition and the first appreciation from my own competitors in the world. The buyer boss was very excited with me, though he didn't like what I was doing. He said, this is a fantastic woman out of Turkey. I can't believe it. When I entered Australia trying to sell chrome chemicals, they stopped me at the border. There was this Japanese Sumitomo guy with me who was ready to distribute in that part of the world because that part of the world was too far to Turkey. I'm talking before Turgut Özal's time. Turkish exports were not that diverse to all those destinations. We were stopped and they said, and, and of course the Japanese gentleman was excited, please don't get angry, Mrs. Azeri, answer the questions properly. So they were asking, what are you gonna do? I came here to sell chemicals. What chemicals? Chrome chemicals. Who are your customers? I named a few, and then he didn't believe the whole story. And the whole idea was there was some terror action expected from the region, so they were questioning each and everybody. He said he wanted to see my files. I showed it to them. And then he said I, he's going to call my customers. Then I got mad. No way, I said. Are you going to be embarrassing me in front of my customers? Now you have to tell me who your boss is. If that's not sufficient, let me go to his boss. Because a woman from Turkey can come over here and sell those chrome chemicals, which unfortunately your country is missing. So this all brought me a very quick promotion. Eventually, within 10 years from my start, I became the CEO of chemical business of Shishajan. So I became a CEO of chemicals group. First thing I did, I invited the vitamin K producer, since we're making chrome. There is some production linked with that, which is a high specialty product. Vitamin K is used for poultry uh, bleeding problems. And it is sold in kilograms. When I was selling tons of bichromate all around the world, trying to sell everywhere, this is a very high specialty product, high price. So can you imagine how good it would be to bring this know-how to Turkey? I'm talking about I was very happy trying to bring product to Turkey. The easiest way to do is to convince people that they make joint venture with you and come over with their own know-how. That was one of such cases. I could convince an Italian company who was producing. So they came over and we made this vitamin K production in the south of Mersin. It still is there. A small investment, but a big money maker. And then, of course, my immediate first project, which I was pursuing and developing, was to change the sodium bichromate production, which we received from the Russians. So that wasn't environmentally friendly. Again, nobody had given us the technology. So this was life or death issue. What we did is get networking, look for previous engineers who have retired, but who, who have technology. And I brought all my engineers together. We sat down and we decided, and we were able to change the whole process of the factory. We spent uh, more than half of the money 
that we had spent for the whole factory at the, at the start. So that was the magnitude of the change of the process. Yet, it worked, and now it is still a good money-making business of Shishajam in the, in, the, in the south of Turkey. 2007, CEO of flat glass business. This is a totally different. Why did they take me away? Because 10 years is, is long enough. You know, no matter how much you love a business, you should always think in the professional life there is a limit of time to it. So they needed me more in the, in the flat. This was, was the biggest business of Shishajam by, by gross profit. That means what? It's construction industry, automotive industry, white goods industry. That's all where you're selling glass. But totally different. You know, you can't talk glass. You have to talk their language when you're selling to them and solar energy. I was about to finish the Tatarstan project when I retired out of Shishajam. That was 2011. But a few more words about NGOs. I did take a lot of part in NGOs. Turkish Exporters Assembly, TIM, Istanbul Chamber of Industry Executive Board, uh, sorry, uh, the board, supervisory board, DEIC, Foreign Economic Relations Board in their executive board. I was uh, the chairman of Glass Tableware Committee of FEVE. This is a European uh, association. Also, uh, I was a board member in Glass for Europe, an association of European flat glass producers this time. Why, why did I do this? I feel that this is, has many, many, many good benefits. One, penetration into international markets. If you are international, you ought to play everything international. So if you have a word to say, if you have a, have a, have a strength to, in the, into the market, then you have to understand in legal arena to be, to be with your competitors and what the sectorial developments are, a, for example, in EU. Uh, networking and contribution to developing Turkish economy. That was, that was the reason. If you're a team member and, 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 and then you are exporting already to 160 countries, you have to be taking part trying to help Turkish exports. One way or another, there is some good advice you can make to each and everybody. Why was I doing this? I kept on asking myself, you know, what, why, why are you pushing yourself to that much of challenge? I always have found the answer by saying I embrace every challenge with a great passion. Challenge and passion go together. And not only did the challenge reach me, as you can very much understand from what I've told you, I created the challenge myself. All, most of 80%, 90% of all those projects were my vision. I was determined to create value that I know for my, by myself from my youth. I, I wanted to achieve beyond average, and I had somewhat of a good confidence in myself. But at the end of the day, I took great pleasure and excitement in it. If I didn't take pleasure, if I didn't feel the excitement, I couldn't be successful. Then you don't feel how much you're tired. You don't feel where you're traveling. You don't feel that it's been almost 200 days a year that you've been running from one country to the other. It was part of me, part of my purpose of life. And if you imagine, as a businesswoman out of Turkey, and generally the only woman in that sector, you know, there was not one single woman in all these industries where I was communicating, creating joint ventures, there was no other woman, and they were appreciating, not only me, but Turkey. So I felt that for somehow I was a pioneer. You know, like a soldier, I had this duty to do for Turkey. I was doing something good for Turkey. That's what I felt as well. So I wasn't only doing my career, but some major contribution. 2011, I entered the energy business. The whole business circle in Turkey was puzzled. Why the hell at age of 60? I'm 60 plus now, I won't tell you. <laughs> but why at age 60, with 30 years of intensive industrial experience, she would go to the energy industry? OMV is an Austrian-based energy company, an integrated oil and um, gas company. We're doing EMP, I mean exploration and production as well. So they came over and bought Petrolofisi. Petrolofisi happens to be the second biggest company in Turkey the second biggest private company in Turkey. 
Uh, we also have just recently started, inaugurated a Samsung power plant, 600 million euro of investment. We're buying Russian said, uh, natural gas, selling it to the industry in, of Turkey. We're doing LNG business. Of course, you know, Po is a big distributor of, of fuel. I mean, I wasn't puzzled if I, about myself. Uh, more importantly, it's a political product. Energy is very much affecting policy of the environment of the region, but in the other way, the policy affecting the energy decisions as well. So how could I find a more exciting and bigger challenge? I said, maybe this is the last one, but let me get this one as well, okay? <laughs> Tips and advice, enjoy challenge. Find your passion in business life. Each success will increase your self-confidence and you will greatly enjoy the next challenge. Be courageous and confident. If you are self-confident, if you are determined, dedica dedicated, and you are fully concentrated, you can then drive the teams together with you. Nobody can do anything alone. It's a matter of driving people together with you. These are the tips that I have found out in my experience that is going to help a lot of teams to be created, and they become as courageous as you are. So that's, that's very effective. Do not be afraid of operations. Now, please, don't, don't, don't misunderstand me. I'm not saying that staff functions are not good enough. But if you are, nobody has to be a CEO, right? First of all, you don't have to be a CEO. But if you ever want to do this, for the ones who want to do it, my advice would be don't be afraid of operations. Operational positions bring a lot of stress because you have to deliver day after, every month. Numbers, numbers, numbers. If they don't go well, you have to come up and explain. And they require a lot of mobility. In order to solve problems, you can't sit in your office and manage everything. You have to be that side, this other place. That's difficult for a woman. I do understand that. However, as I said, multidisciplinary experience and operational delivery are key elements if you want to become a CEO. Manage the balance between work and family. This is the last advice. Uh, natural strength of women, we all know, we speak about it. Natural strength of women is coordination and thinking and managing many different issues at the same time. This is where you bring this natural strength into force, right? We all do that. It is all about time management, I was telling the other day, and giving quality time to what you cherish most. Also at home, you know, put your priorities right at home. Because you are now a businesswoman, business teaches something that we cannot learn back at home, prioritizing. Proper priorities, what is important, give time to it. What is not, if you're gonna forget it five days from now, and it, don't spend too much time on it, go to the next subject. Then you can optimize your time, and then you can spend better quality of time at home. I was saying, if I can manage people and millions of dollars, why can't I manage work and home balance? Everybody can do this. If I had felt that something is going wrong with my children because of me, I would step back. I wouldn't care. I would step back. But it didn't happen. 25? 34. They don't need their mom anymore. They just visited me at the office. This was the occasion when they're going to talk about the Mother's Day on the 11th. So the economist wants to take their opinion about their mother now. Okay? So I was talking to them, and they were giving me these flowers because the, news, the, the guy wanted them to do this. But they will definitely be with me. I mean, they are businessmen themselves. They have their own new careers to run. Thank you very much.